object oriented programming. In programming, there are many models of securing, storing, and organizing data. Object oriented programming, or OOP in, in, in uh, braces here, uh, is just one of those strategies. Conceived in the late 1950s and early 1960s, OOP is a means of defining data as objects which have attributes, behaviors, and boundaries. A class in OOP holds the definition of an object, and there can be many instances of that class. This might be confusing at first, as it was for me, but think of a blueprint of a house as the class and the house itself as the object. There could be many houses that match at, or at the very least have similar uh, blueprints. All right. So a house will have a door. It will front door. It'll have a back door. It'll have a bunch of windows um, and then it'll have a series of rooms within it. OK, so that is the blueprint of the house. And then, of, of course, you've got the foundations and the roof and all of that gubbins. But if, if say, for example, you wanted to create, um, let, take, take this, for instance. Let's say, for example, you wanted to create a hotel and you wanted to create a bunch of rooms that were very identical. Right. Then you would create a class for a room and each room would be an object of that um, of that class right so you would have several objects several rooms that all match the same specification as uh, as the as the class right as the class as the blueprint of that room so you'll have a door you'll have a bathroom you'll have some carpet you'll have wallpaper you'll have a window now, some of them will, some of them won't, because obviously some rooms will not have any any windows, but they will certainly have a door to, to walk in. They'll certainly have a bathroom uh, and all of that stuff, right? The actual, um, and so the class is the defining blueprint of that, of those rooms. The room itself, the object, um, will have certain values assigned to the definitions of the, of the attributes that are defined by the class. So, for example, does it have a window? Yes or no? You know, true or false? Um, then you've got the size of the room, like, you know, there's the square foot of the room. You've got, does it have a double bed or is it a queen bed or is it a single bed? That kind of thing. Um, does it have... Um, I don't know, does it have a balcony? Yes or no, true or false. And so you can you can pass those on, pass those as arguments into perhaps the constructor of the of the class. Uh, so when you go and construct and instantiate the object, um, the the object gets built from the definition of the class, but has certain properties uh, that are set, certain attributes that are set. Um, and then obviously you've got the behaviors of of the room, right? So does it have aircon, right? Um, uh, does it have a TV, right? So you'll have behaviors. Does it have a shower or does it have a bathroom, uh, a, a bath? So you'll have those different behaviors as in like turning the tap on, turning the shower on, turning the... Um, the TV on or or opening the window and then opening and closing the door, locking the door, turning the lights on. Those are the behaviors. These are the methods that would be called upon the room. Right. If you think about it from the house's perspective, from a from a house, you'll have the house has it is 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 this set of dimensions. It has this set of rooms. It has this set of windows. It has this set of doors. Um, it might have an alarm system, right? So if you've got a, a room that has an alarm system, and so this is a class, and the class definition has um, has, has something like a, a property that says has alarm or alarm code, and that's a string, then maybe when the, the, the action to enter the house fires, so that would be, say, a method, enter house, um, 
then we have to call the alarm and we have to check for the the right security code that's been added and then if that's incorrect maybe we need to do that a couple more times and if that's even if that's still incorrect then maybe we need to alert the authorities these are the behaviors of the house now not all houses will have alarm systems right but all houses will have doors and windows so the behavior of opening a window or, or opening a door that kind of that kind of thing the behavior of turning the light on as i mentioned with the the hotel example so the the you got to think of it like blueprints equals the class definition and the actual object the the, the thing that that gets um built from that class definition is the object so a class in oop holds the definition of an object and there can be many instances of that class. There could be many houses, right, that match or have very similar blueprints. So if you had a plot of land, you might be able to create very similar looking houses. Maybe the orientation of the house is different. Maybe some are detached and maybe some aren't. Again, these are the boundaries of, of, the, of the class that you're willing to create. So another example would be to imagine all the attributes of a car. So cars are very good for this kind of um, example. So if you imagine the attributes of a car, a car has four wheels, one steering wheel and an engine. When the driver turns on the steering wheel, turns the steering wheel, the car turns in that direction. And when the driver uh, puts their foot on the accelerator, the car moves forward. Okay. Um, so those are the behaviors of the car. So the, you turn the wheel, the car turns. You press the accelerator, the car goes. You stop the car, you press the brake, the car slows down, right? Now, we're talking very abstractly here, um, very generic. There are many types of cars, obviously, but they all fall down into this sort of, um, the raw form is four wheels, a steering wheel, and they either go forward, go back, or they turn depending on the where you turn the steering wheel. A car has four wheels, one steering wheel, and an engine. When the driver turns the steering wheel, the car turns to that direction. And when the driver puts their foot on the accelerator, the car moves. There could be blue cars, there could be black cars, there could be white cars, there could be sports cars, there could be race cars, right? So there's various different variants of cars, okay? And so... If you think of like the color of a car as an attribute of of the class, so you, when you instantiate a car class, right, you give it a color and say, okay, this is midnight black or this is pearl white or something like that. That means that you've set that at that property of that car object. Maybe it's a required property. Maybe that property has a default color if there isn't one supplied. Um, and then maybe the car has uh, a type. So if it's a race car or if it's a sports car or if it's a estate or an SUV or a truck, that kind of thing. Again, these would be properties that you would set on the car itself. Uh, each car would have would be the object with different values uh, set to the class attributes. One car uh, would have its color property set to black and its type set to race whereas another car would have its color property set to white and its type property set to sport. Each car would, would call the same methods to accelerate and turn. The object is, and then, and then in this sentence, it sort of de defines what an object is. So the object is the thing that was made from the class. And this is a very important thing. When we say the class instance, we are talking about the relationship that that object has with its class. It is the class instance. So you have the object, which is the thing that you're building, you're constructing. That's why there is a constructor and a destructor uh, set of methods. So a con you're constructing, you're instantiating um, the object from the class definition and the instance is the relationship between the object and its class. 